when we first define groups. There are many tiny details we need to prove before we can get to the good material. For here, we'll prove some small facts about group inverses. So, we'll let G be our group, we'll denote the multiplication by circle, and we want to show if an element of our group has a left inverse and a right inverse, they must be equal. Then we'll show that any element in the group has exactly one inverse. And then we'll use that to prove the following useful identity. The inverse of a times b is equal to b inverse times a inverse. Now, for another exercise, we'll have a corresponding list for the identity element. And I'll leave that to you to state and prove. Now, let's recall the definition of a group. So, G is going to be a set. The multiplication circle is going to be a binary operation on our set back into itself. To be a group, we need the following four properties. First, we have closure. So, because we have a binary operation of the group back into itself, defined this way, that automatically happens. If we're in the wild, I would have to show if we have any two elements in the group, when we multiply, we land back in the group. Then we have associative. This just says when we multiply three elements, we can move the parentheses around as long as we stay in order. Okay, the net effect, in practice, we can ignore parentheses. Then we have the identity element. So there's going to be an element E in the group such that if we pick any element of the group, say X, x times e equals e times x is equal to x. So multiplying by e on either side has no effect. Finally, we have inverses. So if we fix some element x in the group, there's going to be another element x inverse, such that if we multiply x times x inverse, it's equal to x inverse times x, which is equal to the identity element. Now, in practice, the first part says by check for an inverse on one side, we automatically get it for the other side. So let's see how we do that. We'll fix an x in the group, and we'll assume we have a left inverse y sub l and a right inverse y sub r. I want to show that y sub l equals y sub r. So we're going to multiply y sub l times x times y sub r, and we group terms in two different ways. First, if we group y sub l with x, then that becomes the identity element, we multiply by y sub r, we get y sub r. If we group x with y sub r, then this is going to become y sub l, and we have that y sub l equals y sub r, and that's what we're looking for. Now, that says, okay, if I have an inverse on one side, I automatically know it on the other side. Question is, how do we know that there's not more than one inverse? So, I could use result 1 to show that. So I'm going to suppose we have two inverses, y and z. So y times x is z, z times x is z. And I get for free from 1 that I could write these in the other order and get e. Okay, they're a left inverse, they're going to be a right inverse. There's two ways to show this. We can use the same trick as before, take y times x times z. Doing the grouping, we'll get y equals z, so the inverse is unique. If you want a quick way, I can use one in the following manner. We have y times x is equal to e, so y is going to be a left inverse. We have z times x is equal to e, but we know we can flip the order by one, so that's going to say that z is a right inverse. So we have a left inverse and a right inverse, so they must be equal. So that says that y is equal to z. So that's another way to see this. Now, to finish, we know that inverses are unique. So that means if I'm looking for an inverse, well, what would I do? We take all the elements of the group, I multiply by x, the one that sends okay, the element to the identity, okay, x times y equals e. That means the y that we found that goes to the identity is the inverse. So all I have to do is find some y that works, and it's automatically it. So we're going to take our lucky guess, b inverse a inverse, multiply by a b, and see that the identity comes out. Now, by associativity, okay, we can ignore the parentheses. So we'll look at the middle terms. 
this collapses to the identity, then we can push this on to either one of these terms, okay, and get the same thing. So I have B inverse B equal to the identity, and that's what we were looking for. So that says the inverse of AB, which we write this way, is equal to B inverse times A inverse. 